Assalamualaikum everyone, welcome back to Muslim Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Ibrahim Shara, and we're here with another episode, week nine. Unbelievable. We got one more week before the end of the season, uh, and I'm here alone today, as you can see. I actually was uh, trying to get Baysan on here uh, this week, but, uh, you know, they're acting hella Hollywood. I think they're too good for the pod. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, they uh, actually, it's my fault. I was, I was busy all week, and I kind of gave them a very short window um, of availability, and so none, nobody was able to make it. That's all right. I'm sure uh, it'll be all right. And, uh, you know, let's get right into it. So before we begin, uh, as always, we're bringing attention and awareness to Philistine, and, and as well, we want to make sure our thoughts are, are going forward to Philistine as well. So uh, may Allah protect our brothers and sisters in Philistine and uh, rescue them, inshallah, I mean, and end the situation for them. Uh, I mean, and let's get right into the, uh, into the games. Um, so as you know, or I mean, let's get into the announcements first, but as, as you may know, we are now one week before the playoffs. You need to go, bro. <laughs> we are one week from the playoffs. And so the playoff picture is looking very interesting here. That's what we're going to talk about before we get into the game. So first of all, we've pretty much confirmed Yazur and Ariha are confirmed to uh, lock down that first, and uh, Nazareth, lock down that first buy spot, right? The next uh, interesting thing, right, and this is going to be a very big game uh, starting uh, th for this week, and it's, it's, you couldn't have written this better. Basically, Shatila and Tiberius are playing each other for that last buy spot. Um, so bring out your popcorn and watch that game, because that is going to be interesting uh whoever wins that takes the bye they don't have to play labor day weekend uh and you know they could just chill at home sip some whatever drink they want and uh non-alcoholic of course and um you know just enjoy enjoy their time off the other team has to fight it out in a sudden death match against you know whatever whatever team that it ends up being uh so definitely high stakes there and then on top of that if that team loses, so Shatila or Tiberius, if that team loses, or whichever one loses, you have Sabra and Baysan that are both four and five. So if any one of them take the win and they are tied with that losing team, it also changes where they're at in that standing. So for example, Tiberius, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, so Tiberius beat Sabra and it beat Baysan, so no problems there for them because the first the first tiebreaker is head to head. So if Tiberius loses, they're still taking that number five spot. But if Shatila loses, Shatila beat Sabra and they also beat Baysan. So it actually doesn't make a difference for them. <laughs> um, so either way, Shatila and Tiberius, uh, they're fighting for that four and five spot. There's nothing that can really change them from keeping that four and five spot. Um, Sabra and Baysan, on the other hand, are, are you know so they're playing. Sabra is playing Nazareth, so it's a tough matchup. Baysan is playing Yazor. So they're both, you know, it's tough for both of them. And their head-to-head -head matchups, uh, it looks like they actually didn't even play each other. Uh, that's the one team they didn't, Baysan did not play Sabra. Um, so for them, it's going to be point differential, which is very interesting. The, the thing is that Sabra right now is point differential is plus four. Baysan is negative 0.8. So you're looking at a four to five point different there, differential there. So basically, if Sabra and Baysan both lose, but one of them loses by more than the other, if that difference is more than five points, that team takes that next spot. And uh, I guess it really depends on what the how the rest of the standings shake out here. But basically... Uh, let's assume it, the standings are the way that they are going into playoffs. You have Tiberius would go against Haifa. Sabra technically would be against Bir Saba. And then Baysan would be against Ekka. Um, and if they wanted to switch something like that up, if they f felt like they had a better sh chance against one, one team versus the other, it really all depends on that point differential. But then again, Ekka, Ajur, Tolkaram all tied up, right? So that, that now we're going further down in the, in the standings here. Three-way tie. All three teams are three and six here. If so, Eka is playing Tolkaram in this in this coming week, right? So, 
Eka plays Tokaram. Eka wins. Now it's four and six. Tokaram drops down two, three spots, which completely changes the matchups. Um, and if, if Tokaram wins, same thing. It's, it completely switches things up. Um, and Ajur, let's see who they're playing. Ajur is playing Haifa. So that's going to be interesting as well. Uh, and then finally, you have two ties between Bir Saba and Haifa. Bir Saba against Ariha, which is an interesting matchup as well. And finally, you have uh, Ajur and Haifa. Um, so, like we said, if, if the playoffs were to start today, you'd have Tiberius versus Haifa, Sabra versus Bir Saba, Beysan versus Ekka, Ajur versus Tokaram. All interesting matchups. Top four would get the bye. But we have no idea who that number number one, that, that four and five spot will be, because it's it's really dependent on that last matchup. The three-way tie between Dokam, Ajur, and Eka is all going to be figured out after this week as well. And finally, you also have the tie between Sabra and Beysan that, you know, it, it it's it's looking like if you were to go in with, you know, picking the favorites, Nazareth and Azor, who are two insane teams this year, then you're looking at Baysan and Sabra losing, but it's really going to come down to that point differential there because they don't even play each other this season. Uh, and then finally, you also have a tie between Bir Sabah and Haifa. So this entire playoff bracket, throw it out the window. It's going to completely change by Sunday. Uh, insane. All right, so that's the last announcement that I have. I mean, I mean, one more one more thing to say is, again, top the way the playoffs are working, I mean, top four teams get a bye, so they don't have to show up or play. If you can, of course, we'd encourage you to come and watch. Top four teams get a bye. After that, every other team, it's going to be top versus low until you get uh, down to the middle. And uh, that's the first round of the playoffs. Second round, you've knocked out four of those teams, and it just goes regular one, one through eight. Um, so, okay, let's get into the recaps for last week. So, first game was Baysan versus Ajur. This was a very interesting game. I remember watching this, uh, or part of it. Big Moose went off. Uh, 19 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists. They took the win by 3 points. Uh, first half, Ajur was not getting it going. It was 16 points that they had. Uh, and then second half, they actually outscored Baysan, uh, 35-30. to 30. Uh, But it was really that differential in the first half that really changed things. Uh, all of Baysan shot really well. 42% as a team. 8 for 9 for Moose. He was on fire. Couldn't miss. Ihsan was 2 for 10. He didn't shoot super well. Ishaq, 5 for 9. It was great. 3 for 5 for Hamza Shah. 1 for 7 from Karim. And MP3 was two for six. But, you know, everyone found different ways to contribute. You had six rebounds from Kareem. Uh, what's it called? Uh, 12 points for his half there. Uh, and he had kind of a steal, a block, an assist, and a rebound. Um, but it, the name of the game here was was kind of, uh, it was Big, Moose, Big Moose's, you know, show. And they really swung the ball. It was, it was nice. Hey, this one came down to the wire. It was actually very interesting. I have, I have a real short story for this one. So, uh... Ajur was they were down by three in the very end, right? Hassan is is dribbling it at the half court, uh, and he's being like pressed because it's like you know there's 11 seconds left in the game, and he and this is his words he he said he was pushed a little bit uh, into back court. They called back court, and and so like it was going to be a turnover, and he goes to the ref and he says, "You've been terrible all game," <laughs> and the ref was like, "This isn't the first, second, or third time." This game is over. He just disqualified him right on the spot. <laughs> and so Ajor loses with 11 seconds left on the clock. <laughs> but it was it was a turnover. So, I mean, they would have lost anyway at that point. But, uh, I mean, looking at the stat sheet, they didn't shoot as well, uh, Ajor. So uh, props to the baseline defense. But they out-rebounded him 37 to 25, which is significant there. Um, but they, they definitely also just like, they lost that turnover battle. Um, it doubled the amount of turnovers that Baysan had. So props to Baysan for their defense in this game. Uh, they also had the personnel. So they had a rare sighting of everybody on their team showing up. Uh, so Ajur only had five, but big shout out to Chandi because they were down and Chandi hit some like clutch threes, two or three of them. He's three for three from the three for this game, but he hit two or three threes that were so timely he had a double double 11 points 13 rebounds two assists kept his team into it i'm serious four for nine uh, overall for, for the game uh and you know definitely a breakout performance for him we look to hopefully see that again it's been it's been a long two seasons but chandi i know he had a acl injury at some point and now he's you know it's good to see him you know play like this it's definitely very nice to see 13 points from Alisson. You always expect a good stat line from him. He didn't shoot the ball super well, 6 for 21, and 0 for 6 from the 3. But um, 
overall, you know, you want to see him get going to get this team. That's one of the top keys for this team. Same with Hassan, 6 for 17. It wasn't too well, but the 5 for 13 from the 3 was pretty hot there. Um, you know, 17 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, and a steal. Uh, he's finally back after his uh, ankle injury there. But, uh, yeah, that's all we got for this game. Great game from both teams. Next, we had Tiberius and Bersaba. This was a very interesting game. So, first of all, right off the bat, Tiberius did not have, um, what's his name, uh, Omar Singer. Bersaba did not have Mahmoud Zayed. But Bersaba played like, this is, this is a brand new Bersaba, I'm telling you guys. Past two weeks, different Bersaba. And I love to see it because I've been saying it on the pod. I'm like, you guys, I think the one, the biggest switch that they made was they put Zayed into that two spot. They put Dinesh into that number one spot and the ball has been swinging. You see the level changes. The ball is going inside to Salman. It's coming back out. Enes is getting better shots. He just, she shot, Enes overall shot one for 11 from the three point line, six for 18. So it wasn't an amazing, it wasn't a good shooting night. You know what I mean? Shot 33% overall, but the team still won. Why? Because everyone got shots at the minimum that anybody got on this team was six shots and that was my raj and he shot 50 percent it was six shots for my raj 50 percent six for nine from salman 13 points there you had 10 points from dinesh their point guard four for ten he was shooting um shot really well and 16 points six rebounds two assists and everyone's getting involved on in defensive end as well you had six blocks you had five steals abdul shabazz 10 points on three for eight shooting like the ball was swinging it was a treat to watch i'm telling you guys it was so nice to see it was refreshing because like this was the problem that they were having the ball wasn't swinging it was staying at the top of the key they were getting a four shot up it wasn't like that this game uh and and you see how it how it can you know go against a team like tiberius who's a great team and even without omar Sindra, they're a great team um but it worked out really well in Bersaba's favor just because they were level changing, the ball was swinging, they were taking advantage of any kind of, like literally they were just swinging, 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 they'll find a, a kink in the armor there and they'll take advantage of it. So it was really nice to see. 43% shooting overall as a team, 32 rebounds, the tied, tied up with Tiberius there. It wasn't really, everything else was pretty much similar. I just, you know, the assists were a little bit higher for sure, but great, great job by Bersaba for sure. Um, I was talking to a couple guys on the teams. They felt they felt that this last game and also the game before, but it felt so much more natural, right? Uh, I think it's like nobody's really playing hero ball, save a little, maybe a little bit from Ennis there. But like I, you know what? I trust the ball in Dinesh's hands. He's the captain leading the ship there. He knows when to you know put his head down, take it in because he lulls you to sleep. He's he's kind of trying to get everybody involved, but like once every three, four, five plays. He'll be like, all right, and take advantage of his mismatch, score the bucket, keep them on their toes. Uh, so, and then look at his stat line, 10 rebounds. I mean, sorry, 10 points, five rebounds, five assists. Unbelievable. Um, all right, and on the Tiberius side, you, you just can't, like, what are you going to do against this guy? Maru's 28 points, eight rebounds, two assists. I was talking to some Verosabal players, and they were like, yo, when, when did he start shooting, man? Like, this guy learned how to shoot. It was crazy. 10 for 19 at, on, on the game. That's greater than 50%. 3 for 8 from the 3, which is pretty great shooting there. 5 for 7 from the free throw line. He had an all-around stat line. He had the only, you know, negative part about his stat line is that he had 5 turnovers, and that was just because he was handling the ball the entire game. Um, on, on top of that, like, there were a couple of times where he would – set his teammates up with good passes and unfortunately they just weren't finishing and so like he had to you know keep the ball in his hand and to sometimes force it and it wasn't like a forced shot where it's like oh this is a bad shot but he just had to kind of put his head down sometimes and, and score and it, and it like i think that was kind of like what you would have needed to do a little bit more but like unfortunately like i i don't think he could have done anything different i, I like Looking at his stat line, looking at the way he played, the rest of his team as well. Like, you had 11 points from Salman, 7 points from Waneed. Um, you know, obviously, you want more contribution scoring-wise from the team. Uh, but, you know, he, he took, I would say, Mahrouz took 19 shots. It's tied for the, the most. Salman also took 19 shots. He didn't have the greatest shooting night that day, 4 for 19. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as a team, they shot 31%, you know, and that's, you're not going to win many games doing that. You, you want to be in that 40 range mark where, where Bersaba was this game. Uh, overall, very good game. Bers Tiberius kind of cut it down towards the end, and then Bersaba kind of extended it and kept the lead. Great job getting their second win there for the season. Uh, definitely good to see. And now it makes us into a very interesting situation for the playoffs where it's Tiberius versus Shatila.
Can't wait to see that. All right, next game. We had Tolkarim versus Ariha. Um, no surprise here. Ariha takes the win, 8-1. and one. Uh, You know, I talked to Omar Abbasi, little o, uh, before the game, and he was like, if there is a team that would beat us in the league, it would be this one, just because of the way that they're made up. Um, like, their, their size, they have, you know, athletic players. Um, but they did a good job. They, they did a really good job. They played a, uh, they played a zone, I believe, against uh, Messiah, and their solution to the Messiah problem was that the minute he would get the ball in the post, they would come out from behind and poke it away. Uh, they would double team, weak side, double, and, and you know, poke it away, which is uh, very effective, it looks like. He shot well, of course, six for eight, but he had 13 points and 11 uh, rebounds. That's like as good as you're going to get um, like, you know what I mean? From, from playing good defense against Messiah. Uh, you, we've seen him put up much, much better numbers than that. If you look at his other games, he's played, um, it says here he's played seven. I don't remember him playing seven, but he's averaging 20 points, 16 rebounds. So the fact that they held him to about half of that, maybe a little bit more than half of that is really good defense on, on their I mean, uh, Arija's part, especially since they don't have any like insane height, um, where they did that, but they have, uh, it's funny, uh, the Haifa guys actually got me calling them this, but they have, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Darius Garland and, uh, and uh, Derek Lively from the Mavs being uh, Big O Abassi and uh, what's his name? Uh, it was Big O and Yazan. Uh, but it doesn't look like Yazan was here uh, this game. It came down to, to Big O, but look at the performance by little O Abassi, man. 34 points, 7 rebounds, an assist, a steal. You also had 23 from Islam, three rebounds, six assists. You cannot sleep on this team, you guys. And it's not always where Omar Abbasi, little Abbasi, gets 34 points. That's not the like norm, I would say, in, in, in our league. Uh, he honestly, a lot of times, gets everybody involved. Like, he's averaging on this team 21 points, right? But to be honest, a lot of the times, his teammates get him going. They... they set him up, and everybody else also gets involved. So, you know, he, he took 25 shots, shot about 50%, which is great shooting. But you also had Islam, 9 for 12. He was hot today, you know. Fursan was 4 for 14. He wasn't insane on his shooting. But, again, he still contributed. 8 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals. That's great. You know, he's playing, he's playing his role. He's doing great. And they come out with a win. It was a comfortable win. They won by 16 points. Um, they shot 50% as a team. It, like, what are you going to do against this team? Uh, 32% from the three. 21 threes is crazy, though. <laughs> That's a lot of threes to take in a game. But if, if you're going to hit 34, we'll give you a pass. <laughs> um, I guess he's got the green light. But, yo, look at Eddie has overall assist total. 17 assists. That is, that is probably the highest assist that we've seen definitely this week and probably, honestly, all season. <laughs> like that's that's how you win games. That's how you win games. You get that many assists. That's a great job by this team. Uh, for San Anderson, I both had six assists. Uh, moving on to Tulkaram. Tulkaram had two people in double digits. He had 15 from Subhan, uh, shooting six for nine. So he, he definitely got it going. Three for four from the three. Uh, you also had 13 and 11 from Masai, which we talked about before. Eight points from Mufsin, three for 12. He didn't shoot that well. Uh, and Wahid as well didn't shoot that well. Seven, uh, seven points, five rebounds on three for 12 shooting. Uh, Honestly, in this situation, I wasn't watching this game, so I didn't see it. But uh, in this situation, I would say, you know, you feed what you the hot hand, I guess. And, and it looks like you have Subhan, Messiah, one and two. That was doing really well. They both shot over 50%. They just didn't get the volume that they needed, I feel like, to really, uh, you know, keep this team going, you know. So, yeah, that's all I had for this game. Next game was a forfeit. So Haifa Shatila, Haifa took their second win, which makes things very interesting, like we said. So now they are tied with Haifa, uh, looking to see them keep their uh, winning streak going next week against, uh, against I think it's, uh, I said this before, I just don't remember what it was. Um, we'll go back to it in the predictions, but looking to see them extend their win streak for sure. All right, final set of games. We have Eka versus Sabra. Very interesting here. Three-point game. That's that's what it came down to. We finally took our third win. Uh, four of us in double digits. That's what we've been missing. It's that we're moving the ball around. We're we're like I, I just felt like this time we're we're taking it in, drawing the double team, 
swinging it out. And then that person that catches that ball on the three gave the extra pass. And of course that shot, when you get that kick out, a lot of times it's a good shot. Like they're, they're still recovering, right? But there was always one more that was just wide open. And we did that a lot more. Um, so you didn't have the, like overall as a team, we played 40, we, we shot 40%, 41%, which is really good. Uh, me and Omar Osmani didn't shoot amazing. It was five for 14 for the both of us. Uh, I didn't think that they were bad shots that we were taking. They were just not falling uh, for some of them. But you know, overall we, we both scored 12 and 13 points respectively, which is really good. Uh, Osman Khan, legacy game. We said it after the game. It was like, Osman had a legacy game. He shot four for seven from the three with some timely threes for sure. 14 points, three rebounds. Uh, he definitely had an assist at the end that they definitely didn't track because he swung it to me and I had a, a layup at the end there to really get us over that hump. Uh, and Yusuf as well, five for 10. He had five assists, six rebounds, 11 points. He had an amazing stat line there. He played a really good game. Uh, this, uh, this, this is how we want our team to play. You know, this, this is the, this is the Eka that we know. Uh, we had 34 rebounds, 10 from Omar Osmani, surprisingly, uh, and 10 from Belamatine. No offense, uh, <laughs> OU. Oh, oh, um, but, uh, yeah, we, we outscored them in the first half, first half, 23 to 19. Second half, we started it with a zone, which was bad for us. It didn't really work out. They kind of cut that lead in. Uh, and second half, we, they outscored us by one point, but we, we still had that three point, um, lead there. Uh, a lot of shots by Ryan Abena. It didn't feel like he had seven for 29. Uh, he actually, it looked like he was taking very good shots. Um, there were a bunch of times where the defender that was on Ryan couldn't stay in front of him. Uh, and, and it was just a touch thing at the end that just, he wasn't finishing. Um, but for the most part, like 30 shots is crazy. <laughs> um, but he, he had 19 points. Uh, he got to the line a bunch, three for six, uh, eight rebounds, three assists. Uh, and, and then Omar Abu Atea as well was playing really well, seven for 10. It looked like he shook off his soccer player to jeans and he really, uh, you know, was playing like a basketball player. He kept going, he kept getting around his defender. And sometimes he would make these turnaround Kobe fadeaways. It was kind of nice. Uh, definitely hadn't seen that before from him, but it looked really good. This is his highest scoring game, I, I believe, 16.7 rebounds, two assists. Uh, was looking really good. 70% shooting is just, that's unbelievable. Um, uh, Maddox Sunny Man as well was shooting really well. So Sabra was also missing Mohamed al Banna and uh, Abudi. Uh, we, key parts to their team for sure. Uh, so definitely different you know it's definitely something that they had to kind of adjust for uh they were playing with Omar Sadiq who usually doesn't get that many uh minutes in the game uh but he, he played the whole game he gave it a lot of effort you know I, I definitely respect seeing o o Osada out there uh Ahmed say two for ten he didn't really get it going either we kind of were trying to run him off that three-point line uh and I, I guess it worked in this uh in this situation but uh yeah this game was definitely close it stayed close throughout it was definitely the intensity was there everyone was really fight for that win. Uh, all right, last game, we had Nazareth versus Yazur, and this is where the popcorn came out. Unfor I really wanted to watch this game uh, live. Obviously, I was playing on the other side, so I didn't get a chance to, and I had a really busy week, so I didn't even get a chance to watch the replay. Uh, it looks like this one was more the first half than it was the second half. Uh, the first half, Yazur outscored them 38 to 32. Second half was 24 to 25, uh, with Yazur also winning that battle, but it was relatively a close game they won by nine points it looks like um i'm gonna mad i really kept them in in this game 27 points 13 rebounds this is an unbelievable performance here by Armand Mana. four blocks 11 for 17 shooting uh 50 from the free throw line isn't great but again this line was such a monster line uh it was just unbelievable I, the only weakness you could say in Armand Mana's uh game is his free throw shooting if he really got his free throw shooting going you, he would be unstoppable. What are you going to do to stop this guy? You hack him, he goes to the line, he hits two free throws, and otherwise he's going to make the bucket, you know, tough, tough contested bucket. Uh, very interesting to see him, you know, play this, play this well for such a long, you know, for all season, basically. Uh, Shafiq as well. He didn't play amazing, three for 11. I was playing one-on-one -on -one with him before, and he looked, he looked pretty loose then. But it uh, looks like three for 11 uh, shooting isn't, isn't that great. Seven points, two rebounds, two assists. Contributed on the steals there, three steals and a, and a, and a block. So he definitely played his uh, his defense. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you had 16 shots also by Amir Hassan, who shot five for 16, which is, again, it's okay shooting. It's not amazing. It's a little under 30% there. 
uh, a little under uh, 33 percent I'm sorry but uh, yeah 12 points 13 rebounds so nice double double there but uh, on the Azure side you had you had three guys in double digits 23 points from Mumtaz he's hard to stop if you you really have to be careful with him because he can stretch the floor to shoot that three uh, and he also can take it in right so when we were playing them I had to guard him and it was he really keeps you on your toes so he had 23 points nine for 15 shooting they had uh, six steals there as a team uh, you know usually you see a lot uh, of steals and they really try to force the turnovers on the other side but this this game was actually a different story they had 14 turnovers on Yazor with uh, the opposite team Nazareth having only nine but you had you know seven for 15 shooting from Saleh Hoon as well with 19 points so these are their you know big two right here scoring really well but uh yo Mon shout out Montaka man he only took five shots in the game one for five 20 percent shooting if you stop there you'd be like what kind of stat line was that he hit one three Right, he actually hit a bucket and an and one, so he hit the free throw. But uh, oh no no no, he he hit a bucket and then he also had two free throws where he split those. So if you just look at his stat line, three points is not that well. But like, listen, nine assists, ten rebounds. This guy is contributing to his team's win. That's what he wants. He wants the win. Doesn't care about the stat line. Doesn't care about how his MBR looks or whatever. He's getting his teammates the ball when they need it, where they need it, and they end up scoring. Um, 11 points from Yusuf, Yusuf Dewara as well. So this is uh, probably his highest scoring game since that trade. Looks good on them. Uh, 43 rebounds as a team. 16 assists. Right under that Ariha number that, you know, again, these are two very successful teams. They have high assist numbers. I think, I think really that's the common denominator here. They're moving the ball around. And a big reason for that is Montaka. Both teams shot the ball well. Close to 40% on both sides. Um, but it looks like Yasur took the cake here. It was very, very interesting to see. Nobody really knew. I mean, I didn't know. I, I called I called Nazareth on this one, but uh, it was a good game. All right, down to predictions for the final week of the playoffs. I mean, the uh, regular season. We have Subra versus Nazareth. Nazareth. I'm going to go quick through these just because, you know, there's nobody here to discuss this with. So these are my takes here. I'm going to take Nazareth here against Subra. Uh, Nazareth, again, coming off a loss against Yuzur. I think they'll take the dub here against Sabra. Sabra also came off uh, against a loss against us, but they were missing two of their key players, so they get their key players back. It's going to be a good game, but I take Nazareth on this one. Uh, next is Yuzur versus Baysan. I'll take Yuzur against Baysan. Uh, I'll take Yuzur. And basically, uh, I, I kind of like with that playoff picture, I think Yuzur and Nazareth take the wins here, unless they just slack because they confirmed their like wins. But um, it also... Determine seating because Yazor and Ariha are both tied at the top, so I don't, I don't see them slacking. Anyway, um, I see it's going to be interesting to see which team loses by less, in my opinion. Obviously, they could still win. This is just my you know prediction here. All right, next game, Ariha versus Bersaba. This is a new Bersaba team. I can't stress this enough. I think Bersaba definitely has a good shot at winning this, but again, every time I count out Ariha, they just prove me wrong, so I can't. I gotta, I gotta stick with my guys. So I'm gonna have to go with Ariha there. Next is Shatila versus Tiberius. This is the popcorn game here. I'm, I'm gonna watch this game of the week. I'm, I'm bringing in popcorn. I'm watching this game for sure. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Tiberius here. It's gonna be interesting though. Uh, okay, next game, Tokalan versus Eka. You know I'm taking my team. I'm not gonna vote against my team. I think we got this. Uh, Tokenham's a great team. They have Messiah. They have Subhan. They have a lot of talent on their team. We just have to uh, focus on playing together. That's really it. Final game, we have Ajur versus Haifa. I take Ajur on this one. Haifa's great. And I'm hoping that they continue their winning streak here. But I do think that Ajur's new lineup is better than a 3-6 and six team. Um, and, you know, they've had enough games now where they can really string it together. So... Definitely going to be interesting to see. Those are my predictions for this week. And here we got your top plays. And here we go. Honorable mention is Slam 2 for Sand. Beautiful pass. Hello. That connection is unreal. By the way, guys, this top 10 plays, is, it was so hard to pick them, but let's do it anyway. All right, next one. Broken play here. Hassan gets the ball deep. Three. It's good. And your last honorable mention here is Sad Man with the and one finish. Take a look at all the contact there in slow motion and watch him finish the job off the glass. What a finish. 
But all right, number 10. You got Alassane with the mid-air adjustment and the finish. This was unbelievable. Number 9, the rookie of the year, Muhammad Adai with the drop step and the finish. Oh my god. He leap moved to confuse the defender and the tough finish of Number 8, we got Alma Abassi with the spin to get rid of a human who was overplaying him. And just a little bit of daylight, and that's just enough for Alma Abassi to finish the job. Great shot, man. Number 7, Taka gives it to Salihun for the and one finish. And it's unbelievable in slow motion. You see how close he is to getting the block. Oh man, through the contact. And look at him celebrating for his teammate. Number six. I get the tough rebound over two defenders. <laughs> Kick it out to Yusuf for the creative spin and the finish. Unbelievable. You don't see many of those. Take a look at it in slow motion. Man, he really ate that contact. Uh, Ryan and Benna with the circus finish. Unbelievable. I honestly did not think he had that one in his bag. Number four, I think I've seen a ghost take a look at this Kobe fadeaway by our Oma. And the degree of difficulty is so tough on this shot. I don't know why he has to act different against us. And here he is again, looking like Rajon Rondo with the over-the-shoulder pass. Bro, who are you today? It's unreal, man. Number two, it's Musayan is getting past Abdul Traor and going up and under with the finish around the rim. That's some nice touch. And your number one player of the week is Hassan Zakir with the spin to get rid of his defender, the pump fake, and finishes the midi. Degree of difficulty on that is tough to watch the footwork. It is unreal. Definitely elite level finishing here. Welcome back from the top plays, everyone. Hope you enjoyed those. We now have uh, one more announcement uh, to tell you guys. So basically, keep your eyes out for the all-star picks. So basically, I'm just going to explain how this works really fast. Um, the way that works is basically I pick at my discretion the all-star committee. The all-star committee is going to um, be com a, a group of people that I've noticed stick around at the games. They watch more games than just their own. Um, on a consistent basis. There's not going to be that many people on the All-Star Committee, and I'll tell you what the All-Star Committee does. Basically, what they do is everyone in the league is going to vote um, for the All-Stars. Um, and the way that it works is we're going to pick, I, I believe, I don't know if I do this alone or if I do this with the committee. I think I do this alone or, you know, but basically I pick which players from each team are eligible for uh, uh, voting. For all star, so this is going to be based off of MBR comparative uh, with the, the eye test and as well as just like regular stat lines. Um, so generally, the best players from each team will be in that list. Uh, if you guys have any complaints about that, go ahead and you can talk to me. I'll, I'll explain my reasoning for it. And it's I don't know what that number is. I can't tell you the MBR minimum is going to have to be twenty or or whatever it is. It's going to really depend on the amount of players that we want to put out um, for voting and the amount of players we can actually have. Because there's also the North teams that are here that maybe on the other all-star team so it's going to be a little confusing here so we have to kind of figure that out um on top of that we also uh basically the all-star committee so the entire league will vote then the all-star committee will vote all-star committee people's votes will count as two um so they sway it a little bit more and that's again based off of the people that are staying and watching the games they could see the talent they could see the players they could see all of these things and so therefore they can have a more educated uh, opinion and, and therefore it should wait, be weighed as more 
Um, I try to keep it spaced out through the league. So you have, you know, if, if I know, I try to get at least one pe person from each team so that it is even, and it's not like favoritism wise, but that's basically the way that we're doing uh, that. And uh, everyone votes top however many, make it to the all-star team. Then we have the all-star substitutions and the all-star uh, reserve. So that's, uh, that's basically what we're doing for that, or the alternates, I'm sorry. So that's, that's basically what we're doing uh, for that. And uh, keep an eye out for more information on that, all right? With that being said, I think that's all that I have for today. Short episode, kept it, uh, you know, short, sweet, it's to the point. Uh, all right, it's a pleasure speaking to you guys. See you guys on Sunday.